What comes to mind when you think of engineering? Maybe you thought of building a bridge, rocket ships, or high-tech gadgets? Now consider what comes to mind when you think of humanitarian work. Maybe you thought of cleaning up after a disaster, volunteering at an orphanage, or building schools in third world countries. My goal today is to merge your vision of engineering with your vision of international development. Now, putting these two seemingly unrelated concepts together is the birth of a new discipline, which I call in development. <laughs> the integration of engineering into international development. As a mechanical engineer, I could clearly see that there's, there's a scarcity of people concerned about in development. Paul Pollock, in his book, Out of Poverty, points out that the world's designers spend all their time working on the solutions to the problems of the richest 10% of the world's customers. A revolution in design is needed to reverse this silly ratio and reach the other 90%. We only innovate for the richest 10%? Well, think about what engineering and technology breakthroughs are making the headlines. The newest smartphone, self-driving cars, and houses that can talk to you. <laughs> uh, now, now, don't get me wrong. These, these technologies are great. They accelerate our connectivity, our mobility, our access to information. But what about the other 90% of the world's customers? Many of them lack clean water, an adequate food supply, and basic sanitation. Let me talk about that last one, basic sanitation. In India, more than a third of the population lacks access to a toilet, meaning that millions of people do their business out in the open, leaving them prone to a host of serious issues, including serious disease and even sexual abuse. In 2011, I went to India as a student engineer with a group of social entrepreneurs. We introduced innovative toilets, which break down waste using earthworms, appropriately called soilets. <laughs> now, these soilets are a match made in heaven for slums in India, because many of these communities lack any type of, of sewer system. So it's so cool. <laughs> they, they look just like normal toilets, have virtually no smell, uh, they're cheap to build, and they even produce, get this, garden-friendly fertilizer. <laughs> After weeks of networking with local aid organizations, we finally found an organiz organization that would take on the Soilet Project as their own. The organization is called SAPID, and it's run by seven women who spend all their efforts into developing slums in the outskirts of Hyderabad, India. We built seven soilets in these slums. And they were successful because we trained local builders how to construct these soilets. And SAPID continued to implement the concept long after we left the country. So I returned to India five years later. I was pleasantly surprised to learn that these, these seven soilets had now become over 150 soilets. Woo woo. <laughs> we like toilets, yeah. Soilets were sustainable because we, the technical innovators, were connected with a local organization. This is in development. The Soilet Project has given me the opportunity to network with some excellent in development engineers. The Soilet was invented by an engineer in Ghana named Kwaku Anno. Now, Kwaku saw that sanitation in his local community had some serious issues. Many of these people had pit latrines, which had, had an unbearable stench and caused serious disease and water contamination. But, but Kwaku saw these problems 
as an opportunity for an engineering solution and even a business solution. He, he uh, invented the soilets and started a lucrative business from it. He then passed the, the concept onto an organization called Help International. And that's where I took the baton. My job as an development student engineer was to take Kwaku's design of the soilet and redesign it for India. Kwaku's soilet design had a rectangular box which allowed the liquid waste to drain in the ground while the solid waste was retained at the top to be devoured by the worms. Our first Indian soilet looked a lot like this one, but I realized that we could drastically cut costs if we use more local materials, like these concrete rings already manufactured in the slum. Sure enough, my Indianized soilet was an in development success. And, well, the best part of this model is that no one is using it anymore. And, and let me explain that. <laughs> so back in uh, 2011, at the end of our stay in India, we held the first ever Indian Soilet Conference to show off soilets to a host of Indian aid organizations. At this conference, I met Dharma Rao, the former chief engineer of the state of Andhra Pradesh. When Dharma Rao saw these soilets, he said, these are great, but I want to make them cheaper and easier to build. And he did. Instead of using brick bathroom walls, he used thin concrete panels. And he didn't use my concrete ring soilet design. But he was able to accomplish the same wastewater filtering with a proven gravel pit design. Hundreds of these soilets have now been built. And most recently, the government of India has adopted the concept. Woo woo. I believe we need more Quakuanos and Dharma Rao's in the world. We need more Quakuanos who see a problem in an underdeveloped community as an opportunity for an engineering innovation. But we also need Dharma Rao's. We need people to, that see an invention and redesign it to make it more accessible and affordable for those in poverty. These two engineers utilize in development as they solved local problems with engineering solutions. Now, with more connectivity and mobility than ever, we don't necessarily have to live in Ghana or India to be in development designers or engineers. At the same time, that doesn't mean you could just look up a problem on the internet, go and 3D print a solution, and end global poverty. That is not in development. Likewise, Many tech companies donate their computers or tractors to third world countries just to find those machines unused, misused, destroyed, and filling up local landfills, ultimately making things worse than they were before. So why are these probably well-intentioned endeavors not in development? Well, not only do they ignore the development side of in-development, but they also ignore the engineering side of in-development. They ignore good engineering practice. Just, just like a bad O-ring can destroy a space shuttle, a poorly fitted invention in a third world country can do more harm than good. Remember that the soilet was successful as we were well connected to a local organization that understood the needs of the community much better than we did. These people didn't need computers or tractors, they needed toilets. Inch development is successful as technical innovators are connected with, to local social entrepreneurs. Now, you don't have to be 
obsessed with toilets to be involved with in development. If you haven't noticed, I'm a little obsessed with these toilets. <laughs> I may or may not bring up toilets on every first date. <laughs> I'm still single. <laughs> <laughs> and now all of you get to join me right here on our first date talking about soils. Congratulations. <laughs> but like I said, you don't have to be obsessed with toilets to be involved with engine development. There are other problems that need engine development. Here are some problems, some world problems in which the United Nations is currently looking for solutions. One in nine people in the world are undernourished. One in five live on less than $1.25 a day. Two in five experience water scarcity. Now, these are big problems, which is great because without problems, engineers wouldn't have a job. I'm excited to meet the Kwekuanos and Dharma Rao's who tackle world hunger, extreme poverty, and water scarcity. The solutions to these problems may not have been invented yet. But I'm excited because the innovators who solve these problems may be listening today. Development organizations will continue to put forth their best efforts to help those in poverty. Engineers will continue to be the problem solvers and, de and designers in society. But unless more people step forward and integrate these two fields, we'll be missing out on a powerhouse resource, something that could help not just millions, but billions. As the next generation of innovators look into the future, Rather than focusing on the cool toys for the richest 10%, if they want to have the greatest world impact, they need to adopt principles of engine development and start catering to the other 90%. Thank you. <laughs>